Hello, so today we're here with Greg. Greg is um, going to introduce himself to, you, himself to you in a moment. Greg wrote our biomechanics page that we all read about in week one. So we're going to talk today to Greg about um, biomechanics a little bit, just to recap from week one, just because we've got him here with us. And then we're going to just talk to him a little bit about prosthetics, which is what we're covering in week four today. So hi, Greg. Hi Rachel. Would you just like to um, just introduce yourselves to everyone just so that they know who you are and what you get up to? Sure. So my name's Greg. I'm an Australian prosthetist orthodist. Uh, I've worked for the Red Cross for just a little over three years now. I've worked in Pakistan briefly, Afghanistan and now the Gaza Strip where I work now. And my job is to uh, help our local partner, the ALPC, with uh, technical things related to prosthetics and orthotics to improve the quality of the service that uh, service users receive. Great. Well, it's great to be talking to a prosthetist on this course so we can have your inputs, which is really important. Um, so you, in week one, we covered biomechanics just briefly, and you <laughs> wrote the Physiopedia page for us about biomechanics. So let's just let's just recap briefly on that because there wasn't much of that covered in the discussion forum. So just perhaps mention what are the most important parts of biomechanics, knowing that it's a topic that we as physios might all shy away from, what are the most important parts of that subject that we should really know about? Sure, so certainly with relationship to prosthetics and orthotics, we uh, apply pressure and apply force to, to the human body and that's, uh, that's always gonna create pressure uh, where the device meets the skin. So that's something we're not alarmed by. We, we certainly uh, do it very carefully and when it goes well, the skin tolerates that pressure uh, successfully. It doesn't always and that's when uh, adaptions and changes need to be made either to the treatment plan or to the, or to the prescription and the device as well. But yeah, that, you can't escape that with prosthetics and orthotics. There will be pressure against the skin somewhere. So are there any particular aspects of biomechanics that we need to understand to understand any part of how that pressure is produced or appears or goes wrong? Mm. So it's, it's a really simple idea, but uh, pressure equals force over area. It's a very simple uh, little formula, but the basic idea that if you, you press on something or someone with a very low area, the pressure is quite high, and if you press with the uh, area increased, the pressure is lower. So often in terms of prosthetic and orthotic prescription, uh, removing a problematic area because it's a problem, it doesn't make sense uh, biomechanically because you're reducing the amount of area that that pressure might be applied over. So that what seems like logic, uh, it's painful here, so can we cut it off please? Uh, is something patients ask often and uh, it's good for all of the team members to know that that's often not a good idea. Sometimes it might be, but uh, it's often good to slow the patient down if that's what they're looking for and if they feel they have an ally in somebody else, a uh, physiotherapist or somebody else within the team. Uh, it takes more more convincing from the prosthetist orthodist to, to uh, ask not or to, to suggest that that's not a good idea. So that's a really good point to make because that is kind of how you wouldn't necessarily naturally think about it. So what you're looking for basically is a large contact area, is that correct? Where possible, where possible, yeah. And we, we have to weigh that up. Obviously there's thing, uh, people that would like uh, something that looks fabulous um, or they might like something that is very, very comfortable or they might like something that works and is very, very functional and uh, we have to weigh up what, what their needs are and what, the, what their priorities are as well. Good, okay. Well, that's a nice little recap of the importance of knowing about biomechanics. Um, so this week it's all about prosthetics. Now, mm -hmm. physiotherapists, we don't get any training in prosth prosthetics at all. Um, so... And although there are other disciplines on this course as well, um, and I know there's some orthotists and prosthetists here, and we'll be talking about how we can work together in a minute, but just for the physios, what are the important things that they really need to pick up about prosthetics this week? Mm -hmm. So again, with relation to any changes that they might think might need to be made to the prosthetic uh, prescription, the design of the mm -hmm. socket in particular, 
Um, some understanding of the ground reaction force, I think, is really, really useful. Uh, in the biomechanics page, I spoke about where the ground reaction force is can change the socket pressures quite a bit. And again, uh, understanding that a change to the socket might not be the most sensible thing to do. It might be a change to the alignment that will uh, change the pressures within a prosthetic socket. So for me, that's always um, having, if the team members have some understanding of the grand reaction force, uh, gait and alignment uh, are easier things to discuss and to improve in a patient. That's good. Excellent. And we're also talking about gait analysis this week. So in relation to individuals with a prosthesis, what are the important part, pieces of knowledge that we need to be sure we have there? Mm, again, I, I do think the grand reaction force, I'm sorry, the repetitive is very, very important. Often what happens is when the foot hits the ground, something a bit unexpected happens. And that's the grand reaction force. That's when the weight of the body and all of the momentum that the body has hit the ground with is uh, there's a reaction force from the ground pushing up onto the prosthesis. And it's at this moment during stance phase where, like I say, if something unexpected is happening, that's the product of the ground reaction force. And to improve gait, we need to change often the way the ground reaction force is working. Often physiotherapists manage unwanted moments or movements by increasing the strength of a muscle or increasing the range of motion of a muscle. What a prosthetist and orthodist should be doing is uh, using the grand reaction force and changing it, either its timing, its position, its origin, uh, its direction, to, to change the way the body moves. And this is really at its best when two professions bring different skills uh, to bear on one patient, that they can get better results uh, for the patient. So, so sorry, just to understand that prosthetist orthodists have slightly different thinking sometimes about how to affect the change uh, uh, on a person's gait. So just before we move on to the working together bit, mm -hmm. just you mentioned about that that you would change the ground reaction force to improve the gait. How do you mm -hmm. change the ground reaction force? So we can do that via things in prosthetics, things like uh, dynamic alignment. So we could plantar flex the foot, for instance, in a transtibial amputee. And by plantar flexing the foot, we're moving the ground reaction force more anteriorly. So we're changing the way the ground reaction force works around the knee joint. So we're promoting a more knee extended gait, perhaps, if the knee was flexing excessively during stance phase. Okay, so it's about changing the prosthesis, altering the prosthesis. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And with a prosthesis, there's great opportunity for this because we decide where the foot is uh, distally to the socket. And as a result, what we're actually doing is we're deciding where the ground reaction force is uh, during gait. That's great. That makes sense. The ground reaction force is becoming clear on why it's so important. <laughs> um, and then, so it's really important. We have um, prosthetists and orthotists and physiotherapists and other healthcare disciplines in this course. And uh, which is really nice because we can all have a conversation together about how we need to be working together to get the optimal outcome for our patients. So what are the, what are the important points to pick up on this week in relation to prosthetics? Mm -hmm. um, so I guess one of the things I mentioned right at the start was not all pressure is bad pressure and to understand and be educated about the fact that for a lower limb prosthesis, if, unless the person's using gait aids, all of body weight at some point during the gait cycle, during single limb support, has to be borne by this prosthesis or, or held up by this prosthesis. So there must be pressure the, the, as the person pushes down into the prosthetic socket. And it's just to understand that that's a reality and also that uh, it's everyone's job to monitor that pressure and to make sure the pressure is being tolerated well. So that's about talking to each other and communication, isn't it? Absolutely. And at its best, we all understand enough of each other's job to support each other and uh, at least use the phrases and explanations for the patient to reinforce the message that they'd, uh, the patient would be receiving from, from each other profession involved. 
Yeah, and we covered a lot of that in week one, how important it is to understand about each other's uh, roles and the communication side of things in the interdisciplinary mm. team. So that just carries over into your prosthetics design and adjustment and creating good alignment for GATE, which is what we're moving on to, um, starting with this week and moving on to next week. So mm. does that make sense? Perfect. Sense to me. And we... Um, like I say, if we really understand each other's jobs well, we can uh, really support uh, the, the specific goals that each profession is working towards in rehabilitation. So if, if I'm aware of what the OT is doing, what uh, maybe a speech and language therapist is doing, there's small things I can do um, to, to promote that uh, through my interventions as well. And I hope uh, things that other professions can do to support my work as well. For sure. Great. Um, I think that's great. We've covered some excellent topics there. Um, is there any other messages you'd just like to send out to the participants of the course this week? Uh, just to say how pleased I am with how much activity there's been and uh, very, very pleased with the uh, the number of people participating in the course. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a really, really impressive result that so many of them are uh, interested and, and willing and participating and uh, my congratulations to you as well for organising it. It's fantastic. Thank you. Well, it's been a big team effort. Everyone's um, everyone's done their bit, and and yes, we thank the participants for being motivated as well to take part mm. in the conversation. So great. So great to talk to you again today, Greg. Uh, thank, thank you very much, and we'll see you in the discussion forums this week. I look forward. All the best, everyone.